What's up, YouTube? Welcome to part 15 of Horizon Zero Dawn with a therapist. I, as always, am really grateful that you are willing to watch these videos, that you're willing to follow along as I do all the side questing. For those of you that may be getting to a point where you're frustrated because I'm not following the main quest line, the way that I play these games is to do the side quest first. Just how, it's just how I roll. If I do the main quest line first, I have no interest in going back and doing side quests, so I do side quests first. I play these games to illustrate stuff and to talk about psychology. I don't play them to play through them the way that you may want me to play through them. I'm not saying this to be a dick. I just really want to set some realistic expectations here. Like, I'm going to be burning through side quests and collectibles and stuff for a while uh, because we've had some really rich conversations from them, and I enjoy them a lot. So I, for those of you that have been sticking through these and watching them and engaging with them I, and enjoying them, I'm really grateful for it. This game is a very well-realized world, and I want to engage with as much of it as I possibly can. So uh, if you want to watch somebody burn through the main quest line, go watch somebody else. Uh, but if you want the richness of conversation that we bring to these, converse, to these games, I'm your guy. So, And I assume if you made it this far, that's what you're in for. I appreciate you immensely. Leave a like. For the love of God, subscribe to the channel if you're 15 parts into this and you haven't subscribed. I know, I know, it's so laborious to move your mouse like six inches down your screen to hit the subscribe button. I know that it's a huge ask, but please, please, please hit the subscribe button. It makes such a huge difference. Like, you have no idea. It makes a huge difference to do that. I know that every person on YouTube begs you to do it, but my God, if you've been watching these playthroughs and you're not subscribed to the channel, please... Hit the subscribe button. I have analytics that show me there are there is at least one of you right now who is sitting here who is watching these videos and isn't hitting the subscribe button. And maybe you're sitting there going, well, now don't tell me what to do, Dr. Mick. I'm just going to hold out now because you've been saying this. Yeah, don't be that person, please. It's free. Just please hit the subscribe button. I love you a long time if you do that. All right. Oh, man. All right. Spiel over. Thanks. Love you. All right. Follow the links in the description. Let's play. Adele is sitting here watching going, hello, it's me. As I said that, hi Adele, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. All right, let's go see what Mr. Capulet's up to. Or Montague, I forget which one's Montague and which one's Capulet, it doesn't really matter. Romeo was the Montague. That's what I thought, because I'm pretty sure I called her Miss Capulet uh, last episode. So, all right, cool. Mr. Montague. What's going on over here? Mm. Here's what's left of the fire. Looks like some sort of scuffle ending with someone being dragged away. Oof. Yeah, oh boy. What is this thing? Why does this exist? We'll ask those questions later. Like, if you're gonna do guardrails, at least. Hey, speak up or I'll cut off your other finger. Who were you signaling? That must be a troll. Hear him talk. Hard to believe that thing fought Quite alongside us. Quite a few guards us. there. I tell you, Maybe traitors there's another way are in. everywhere. I don't know about that. Sure. As soon as it gets a little hard, people give up. Want to do the easy thing instead of the right thing. Listen to him. Doesn't sound easy. 
He's been at it for hours. I guarantee he lit that fire to signal his Meridian pals to come and save him. Sit back in the capital, easy as you please. Here they got plenty of food over there. So what if they do? Doesn't make them right. Quietly. Who did that? Really? Okay, there we go. Spotted some trouble. Do it the hard way. Oops. You're not gonna die. Made it. Whoa! What a shot, MLG, baby. MLG. Oh! I mean, come on. These guys didn't stand a chance. Well, it's a shame that we can't talk to these guys about uh, why they're holding this guy captive. New bow is super OP. Dude, I mean, that was... Some of those shots were A freaking plus, man. Patrol. Are you a troll? Alita sent me. Alita? I was gonna ask her to leave with me. To go into the Outlands. Somewhere out in the sun where no shadow could reach us. But we wouldn't have made it. They would have followed me. I know now. Alita. Tell her they... Never learned about our island. She's safe. Give her this. Tell her it's worth it. A troll? <sighs> poor a troll. And poor Alita. Jesus, how many people have we seen at this point utter their last words and then just die? My God. Um, oof. So, the, the only thing I really want to touch on here is this says a little bit of something potentially about the Shadow Karja. Where this guy wanted to get away and was afraid that they would be followed and killed. That sounds very similar to why people don't leave, like, North Korea. Uh, if you're, if you, one of the ways that you can control people is to essentially instill fear in them that if they exert any kind of autonomy away from the system, they will be followed they will have to live a life of absolute fear because you don't know if you're, somebody's going to come out and just gank you. So like this guy being like, we, weren't, we wouldn't have been able to do it anyway because the Shadow Card would have looked everywhere for us tells me that they possibly have some real insight into how insular they are. 
And again, I don't know enough about the Karja and the Shadow Karja to know who's right or wrong. I mean, it does seem like if the Shadow Karja are disciples of Jaron, there's probably a chance that they're not great. But you're seeing that even within the Shadow Karja, there may be people that think for themselves who realize that the regime that they're a part of or the group that they're a part of is unsavory and they don't want to be a part of it but they're held in place by all sorts of control mechanisms that ensure that they don't leave. Which gives very tribal slash cult-like behavior. You, is you, you make people afraid to leave because then they don't. And they continue to engage in the group and be a part of the group out of a sense of fear. It's not exactly the kind of vibes I'd want to live around. But when you know, which leadership and cults usually know that they are acting in a way that's self-serving and not great for their constituents, then you also consciously put these controls in place so that this kind of stuff happens. And it's really sad. Because it would be easy to look at Jaron without knowing anything about him and say, oh, he's a shadow card, so he must be a dick. But we hear him say, I wanted to go away from where the shadow touches and I wanted to get out of here. And data followed me and they would have made our lives a living hell and it would have put her in a in a bind and i didn't want to do that to her it's really sad but we we're seeing so many ways in this game that different groups exert control over the people that are within the group such that a lot of people are part of the group not even necessarily because they want to be. No, they could no. be part of their group because it's all they know, because they've been had fear instilled them in them of what will happen if they leave. They've been ideologically manipulated. Like there's so many reasons why people at this point are staying in some of the groups that they're in. Uh, and a lot of it at the end of the day comes to survival in a place like this. I suppose we might as well go hit up that tall neck and corrupted zone and get some of these collectibles while we're chilling here. And then we can go return to her. Man, what a bummer that we have to deliver that news. wasn't exactly it wasn't exactly on my bingo card today oh there it is god ah, man they're so cool looming in the distance I must be closing in on the signal Who's this? Who are you? What's up, guys? I have a friend in the guard. A machine broke up his legs. I need to find a way up to the tall next head. Perhaps by jumping up on that. Dude, this bow is outrageous. But wow, 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 wow. There's a lot of you here. Okay. All right. 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 How about this? How about it? They've awoken the hive. You don't want to mess with me. Right on Woo! I know you're out there, you wince. You wince? What kind of insult is that? 
All right, let's just go. Let's let's just go wreak havoc on these machines, huh? We got some time. What up? Oh God, oh Lord, it's coming. Get up. This should be a good spot for jumping onto the tall neck. Come around. I think this might be the last one that we have to hop on. Favorite machine so far? Oh, probably the Thunderjaw. They're just super badass. Yay. All right. Now I just have to reach its head. Baby. Ooh. I want to shake the hand of whoever's idea it was to make tall necks. Yes, yes, and cover everything for me. Yes. Good. Oh, we got one more tall neck up in the Banuk lands, it seems. All right, we got a vantage point over here. Oh, we got a lot of good shit. We got a lot of good shit to go get. So let's go. Uh, I suppose we should go grab this bonfire real quick and then we'll go. I always thought her tent override tendrils look kind of creepy though. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. All right, corrupted zone. that too. I can do it too. God, haven't you all learned? Don't you all talk? Do I carry this gun all the way over here? Make quick work of this corrupted zone? I think we do. And then we got that Banuke statue up there. I don't know what kind of 
big ass machines we're gonna have to fight over here. Plus, I need, you know, if I'm gonna maintain my core strength, I really gotta, I gotta carry heavy electrical weaponry around. So this seems like a this seems like a good idea here. Squeeze into this corrupted zone. We're gonna spend more time walking there than fighting them, pretty much. That's the goal. Oh baby. Oh. Oh, what up? <laughs> oh man easy peasy hey you want to feel like the most powerful badass in the world play this game on easy you, you will not regret it <laughs> The absolute perfect amount of ammo. Yes, indeed. That was pretty nice, huh? I mean, if I could take out Red Maw in three seconds, it was pretty much guaranteed that this was not going to go well for them. All right, let's go get that Banuke's figurine. Uh... Oh, don't tell me. Oh, man. I gotta go. Oh. Sand in my throat. Burns. Yeah, I'll bet it does. Wouldn't feel great. I gotta go all the way around, don't I? Ugh. Figure out the way up. Come on. Ah, come on. Yeah. Skyrim climb. Skyrim climb, Aloy. We do it so well here. Oh, boy. much for being careful yeah 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 this is not the way you're going the wrong way i get it this is not the way gorilla wanted me to do this this flower since I'm already working my way over here <laughs> plus how badass will it be to be like f fully kitted out for the uh, whenever we get back to the main quest Alright. 
Down we go. There's the flower. Slumbered this spring morning and missed the dawn from everywhere I heard this cry of birds. That night the sound of wind and rain had come. Who knows how many petals then had fallen. Not me, that's for sure. All right, let's get this, let's get this banook. Figurine after I wreck. Oh boy. Oh, look how much easier this path would have been if I would have just followed the easy path. I am looking forward to when we eventually maybe learn a little bit more about the uh, utility of all of these flowers or like what they are. So much damage now. All right. Look at all these cacti. This dead machine. Did I kill this? I don't think so. Is touching the cacti hurt? No. Go to the other side. there in a dust storm dude that's way up there that is way up there oh dust storm done dust storm done now the real question is what angle do you take to get up there? Because it's as, like doing this is not, is very clearly not what I'm supposed to do. Easier when I was a kid. So look for the paint. There we go. Okay. Climb the jungle gym. Yeah. Oh, there's like even little arrows pointed for me. Whoa, look at that place over there. 
Damn it! Are you kidding me? I'm telling you, man, the auto run shit. I'm I'm here for it. Like, just watch Aloy climb this mountain for me would just be so much better than having to do this. Tightrope. It'd be a cool accessibility feature. I don't see what it would hurt to have it. All right. Pick up a new artifact, the vision. Tech took. Falsely accused, exiled, starving and cold, I faltered. This I confess. As the death chills overcame me, I lost will and purpose and felt the bottomless callousness of fate. But then a vision. I saw in my mind's eye an endless white plain with only a single figure waiting. It was you. And I knew in death, if not in life, I would see you again. When the chills faded, I rose with new hope. I paint my mark here for you in anticipation of our meeting and leave you this offering, though it will never touch the warmth of your hands. It's almost like that guy wrote that, or that person wrote that after they, um, after they died. Like, it's kind of got that vibe. What are you doing? Ugh. What are you doing? Did I get down, though? No, okay. Well. I got down. <laughs> Holy shit. Hey, if you ever want to fast track in this game, just kill Aloy and you get to, you'll get full health and uh, you'll get down. <laughs> Oh, man. Speedrunners hate him. Den, thank you for the 16 months. 20 minutes ago. Sorry I missed that. I, honestly, I'm here for the vantage points, man. Like, I, I want... I want to get all the vantage points because that guy's story is super interesting to me. That place. Looks real spooky scary. All right, do we Skyrim climb this too? Maker's End. Not much farther now. Fallen said he found an image of the woman I resemble on an ancient device. If she's my mother, why would there be traces of her all the way out here? Great question, Aloy. I don't 
don't get it. Who is she? Her name. Oh Elizabeth shit! Elizabeth Sobek. You spying through my focus again? Well, go on. What do you know about her? Stay on your present course, and before long, you'll know her as well as I do. Maybe better. But be wary. Maker's end is crawling with Eclipse troops. To help you deal with them, I've left some useful equipment just outside the ruins. Your focus will show the location. Oh. Inadvertent main quest line. How does he, and how does he know these things? He said Elizabeth Sobeck. What kind of name is that? Interesting. All right. I mean, it's I'm, I'm okay with that. I must that. advise you against visiting Sunfall. <laughs> you again the powers that ordered your death believe they were successful if you reveal yourself to their agents in sunfall your escape will have been for nothing well that's certainly ominous boy i wish he'd say a little bit more about who he is he's got all the power and control a vantage point more ruins more stories Ooh. Looky there. Day 12. As we watch the booster arc up into the night sky, riding a pillar of flame, you took my hand, squeezed it, and said, you have written the story of our family across the stars. text <clears throat> hi ma last stop after this i'll have said everything i need to it was just a routine launch but for us it might as well have been apollo 11 it was my first payload a seeker extractor with an upgraded propulsion system i designed the vehicle was destined for m89282 an asteroid rich in ruthenium and tungsten a metallurgic claim as it happened a family event, through and through. So there we stood, in the open air as night fell and the stars came up. And of course, I was thinking of that night years before when we watched the Perseids together and talked and dreamed of this very moment. You were thinking of it too, because when the booster launched as it rose into the sky on its jet of flame, you took my hand and said, You've written the story of our family across the stars. Even then I knew it wasn't true. The vehicle was headed for a rock, not a star. It was a routine launch, not some voyage of discovery. But my heart was too full to quibble. I just smiled and squeezed your hand back. It was the finest moment of my life. You and me, Ma. Onwards and upwards. The start of great things. But after you died and I broke down, the meaning of that night changed. Everything that seemed wonderful seemed to turn rotten and false. It seemed false because it was false. I'd never written anything across the stars. Sure, I'd hoped to work in a project like that, a deep space probe or a colony ship, but it never happened. And now that my career was over, it never would. And then, when I found out about the plague, the memory haunted me even worse. Because it wasn't just me who failed to write a story across the stars, you see. It was all of us. Our entire species. All our innovation, all our tech, all our striving, and it came to zero. I've been looking up the stars a lot, Ma. The only story I see written across them is that we are small and insignificant and will soon disappear with hardly a trace left behind. It's a hard story and I don't much like it, so I guess maybe what I've been trying to do these past 12 days is tell a different story. Not a big story written across the stars, but a tiny one, written across the humble earth of the only world we ever got to know. I have no reason to think that anyone or anything will survive to ever read it. But whether that happens or not, the truth of the story remains. And once upon a time, on a planet called Earth, there lived a boy named Bashar, who loved his mother very, very much. Goodbye, Ma. 
I love you. Bashar Mati, son of Amal and Bihas Mati, stepson of Wyatt Mahante, 24th November, 2064. Sounds like there were some big expectations that humanity had that didn't get met. I don't know if that was his last message or if that was a memorial to his mom because we 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 read a message where he talked about killing himself. Uh and uh I don't know. May, like maybe that is him saying goodbye, or maybe uh, that's him literally just saying goodbye to his mom because he mentioned her death. Hard to know. It's a shame we don't get to talk to him to learn more about that. I really love those. I, the the way that that journal is written is so just like heartfelt and just oh man, they're so good. A quick way down. Human's tendency to overestimate their importance seems to be a real theme in his writing, and can't say it's not true. Since our brain can't really comprehend the entire scope of the universe, we have a tendency to believe that we're more important in it than we probably are. forward to reading more of those and kind of getting the whole story. Let's make this quick. Okay. By its own nature, it towers above the tangle of rivers. Don't say it's a lot of dirt piled high, without end. Mist of dawn, the evening cloud draw their shadows across it from the four directions. You can look up and see it, green and steep and wild. Yeah, I mean, the depth of these side quests is amazing. I, I, the, I, I We say this every time, but like, truly, I love how much there is to do up here. I absolutely adore it. I mean, I guess while we're, we might as well, I guess, go up here and just do this because I've got to get another vantage point. There's some ancient vessels. There's a whole thing to look at. Maker's End, go to the ruins. All right, screw it. You know, we're going to do a little, uh, little main quest line here because that's their trajectory anyway. Go figure. But this is the way I like to do it. Oh no, where it sort of like naturally progresses because we just Look are exploring the world. It's actually, okay, so if I'm being totally honest, I actually really love the way that this unfolded because I'm literally just out here exploring the environment and doing whatever. And then freaking Lance Reddick shows up in my ear and is like, ooh, you're getting close. And you're like, what? Oh, shit. Like, I, I kind of love how organic that entire thing was for that to happen that way. Like, I had the same experience of him getting in my ear as, as Aloy would. I'm like, oh, Jesus. But I love that we have the latitude to explore this the way that we want. It's, it's what makes these open world games so great.
Oh shit, bandit camp. Get out of here, dude. This bow is stupid now. Especially with hard point arrows. Whoa. Why is that one green? Hope I didn't raise any alerts that somebody's coming. Does not look like I did. That was a hell of a commotion. <laughs> that alarm will wake up the whole camp. And more besides. Not anymore, it won't. They probably think it's like one of their scout teams. Nothing there, idiot. You just call yourself an idiot? Be nice to yourself before you die. Man, your last words were calling yourself an idiot. That can't feel great. What a, what a shame. Always be kind to yourselves, friends. You never know if it'll be your last words when you talk shit to yourself. It's just a heart attack. What a shot. What a freaking shot that was. A cracked and battered vessel once dear to the old ones bears the legend Sterling Malkeet. Sets of ancient vessels can be traded. I didn't see shit. All right. Wow, this is a huge camp. I just wanted the cup, guys. That's all. That's all I wanted was the cup. And you guys got to come out here 
and get all shitty with me. Shoot him in the nuts. There you go. I'm scared. Okay. I mean, am I the best archer in the world? I don't know. You tell me. I just cleaned that place out with a series of one shots. Time. Hope I don't burn in the sun. Again. Yeah, me, me too, man. I'm the redhead. Don't bitch at me. The Osiram are buying up all our property. All right. <sighs> so the ancient debris. All right, I guess we'll go get that vessel. We'll go see if there's any lore around there, too. And we're going to head, continue to head toward the main quest line. Good shit. <sighs> you were 1,000% the best ar archer in that camp. Damn right I was. Your own vessel instead of a tea. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> That's pretty good, Skog. Pretty good. Pretty good. Going all right, Taco. I hope you're doing all right, too. Have they told us about the origins of the machines yet? Nope. Uh, I don't know much about the origins of the machines. I don't know much about why Lance Reddick is in my ear. Uh, that is, um, that's all some stuff that we are gonna learn, I'm guessing. I'm still very early on in the main quest line, I'm guessing. Because I haven't done a ton of the main quest. But knocking out all these side quests means that when we eventually get to the main quest line, we can really just, uh, immerse ourselves in it. And I don't have to worry about all the side questy stuff, so. I'm kind of excited for that. Got another vantage point here, so let's do this. That's got to be it up there. There it is. Might regret this. I'm over here climbing the Matterhorn. I don't really need to do that. How the hell? Boy's mother was a mountain goat. Yes. Got some mountain goat in these jeans. Very elaborate way to have to get over here, but. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. A pocket shit storm tour. Day one. Where better to start than at the end? Or where the end started, anyway. Round zero. Where it all came crashing.
crashing down. My career first, then everything else. And I mean everything. I love that he calls it a pocket shitstorm. So good. All right. Um. <clears throat> Text. Hi, Ma. Remember how ecstatic we were when I landed the job here? Aerospace control engineer at Faro Automated Solutions. Straight out of Stanford U. Saturday, I was tossing a mortar board. Monday, I'm an employee of the biggest corporation on Earth. Starting wage, six times basic. It was a dream come true, yours as much as mine. When I found out I'd landed the gig, I waited until graduation day to tell you in person. You were so proud. You hugged me five minutes straight, laughing and crying at all the time, all at the same time, saying over and over, onwards and upwards, the start of great things. I thought so too. It seemed as though nothing bad would ever happen to me, to us, ever again. But bad did happen, of course. More bad than I ever knew was possible. And while I can't blame FAS for making you sick, Metallurgic gets the credit for that. I can sure as hell blame Pharaoh for the rest. But let's talk about this end of the world later. It plays a part in this story, of course. If I hadn't found out what was coming, I wouldn't be doing this, leaving these time capsules behind. But the apocalypse isn't the story I want to tell. This is going to be about our family, about us. It's time to get going. I've spent enough of my life in the shadow of this place. I've got 11 more vantage spikes in the trunk of the Sabara I rented, and some pretty good ideas for where to sink them. So let's get the hell away from this place and start sinking. So he wants these to be found. Dude's got some family legacy shit that he's living through and working with. Let's go loot that cash. See what's in there. Ugh, the scrapes. Some kind of big ass settlement. Right where he said it would be. Plus twenty two spear damage coil. I have to put that, so I have to put that on my bow. Okay, all right, I'm not worried about that. Okay, so we got two runes and a corrupted area in here. Or two vessels, so let's. Because I want you to succeed. Okay. Good hunting. We'll talk later. 
Wait. Damn him. Metallurgic International. Okay. Cool. Got it. Go do the corrupted zone. That's it, huh? All right. Not very difficult. There's got to be some juicy lore inside of these. I'm not really worried about upgrading my spear, if I'm being honest with you. I don't really care. I'm better with the bow anyway. So much for being careful. Yeah, and then yelling at the top of your line. Oh, shit, so there's some people in here. Oh, I'm glad we did the vantage point so we could kind of see what this place looked like before we came in here. Bite out here. All right, could have been worse. The corrupted watchers acting as these dig sites, they're massive. I wonder what they're digging for. I wonder if they think that Eclipse, just like he said. Where the hell is that coming from? Oh shit. So we're just going to sort of snake our way through here, I guess. See if we can find that vessel. Got some more people showing up. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. Oh shit. Oh no. No. I was doing so well. A corruptor. Oh shit. Okay. Well. I sneak around as if those things are going to mess me up and then I just absolutely decimate them. Like, I really do just need to go guns blazing in here. I mean, it kind of, it's, I don't know, it's, for the immersion, I try not to go too crazy, but man, we just really do wreck these guys every single time we go in here. <laughs> what have they been uncovering here? Great question, Aloy. I love that she asked herself rhetorical questions out loud. I do that too. It's kind of a nice way to help yourself process stuff. It's like Jeopardy for your own mind. I mark this vessel now. Whoa, man. Explosion. What is going on here? Nice Thunderheads vessel. Like, look at that. We got a whole set. We're rocking. Oh, something tells me this is going to be really intense. Domino's gone too far. And she just killed it in two seconds. No! <laughs> Did it. Those things pack a punch. Do they? All right. That eclipse officer had a focus. Let's see what's on it. Man, that really, that really packed a punch, chat. I pack a punch. I'm the Deathbringer. Call me Deathbringer. I brought more death than that thing did in the last 10 minutes.
Let's see what you have to say. What? What is this? The entity lives. Unacceptable. 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 Did you see that? No answer, huh? Figures. Things just keep getting stranger. I need to find <laughs> hey. a way inside the tower. Hey, Lance Reddick, what was that? So, <laughs> um, before we find out what this does, I'm really, I am so intrigued by Aloy's response to this. And it really just, it speaks so deeply to the extent which your lived experience and the things that you've learned and had represented to you impacts the way that you process information. Aloy did not grow up revering the All Mother. Aloy grew up as an outcast and didn't get the exposure to the just deep level of like religion and spirituality that goes along with essentially worshiping what she's standing in front of right now, just in the mountain where the Nora village is. Like, that's the thing that the matriarchs all hang out with and call the All Mother and have decided is the all knowing presence that they worship. Aloy walks up to this door and she's just like, oh, yeah, another one of these. Whereas a matriarch or somebody from the Nora tribe who knows about the All Mother in the mountain would lose their mind right now. What? Is it another All Mother? Is the All Mother in multiple places? Like, it would be, like, mind-blowing. But Aloy wasn't taught that. Aloy didn't grow up with the understanding of that being some deified thing. She sees it as just, like, another machine or a door or a security whatever. And so she's almost annoyed by it rather than absolutely mind blown by its existence. And the only difference is the representation she had for this in the story she was told about it growing up. Like it's kind of amazing how one thing can mean so much to somebody and could be a nuisance to somebody else. And when you start getting into the symbolism of something as being a deity that you worship and other people look at it and go, eh. That really can cause problems because of how much meaning and identity gets loaded into it. Oh, I just want to point that out because it's so funny to me that she's like, oh God, another one of these when like, yeah, Tirsa would absolutely shit her pants if she walked in front of this thing. Ninety nine point four seven percent. She turns away because it didn't work last time. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Greetings, Dr. Sobek. Please step inside. Oh, shit.
And we'll see what happens in part 16. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's how back you are. 355,510 days out of the door for your meeting with Mr. Farrell. Please proceed to the 35th floor. Wait, wait, wait. 350,000. That's hundreds of years ago. What's going on? That's that. Yeah, that's a lot of days. I love that this machine's been keeping track of that. This tech is amazing for holding up this line. I know. I got you. I had to do it. I had to do it. Over nine hundred seventy-two years. That's 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 a lot. Now, here's the other beauty of this. I, I, we're gonna, I really, really wanna hammer this point home as we're going through this. The entire reason that Aloy's not absolutely losing her shit right now is because of the experience she had as a kid. She already went through this. She's walked through this. She doesn't have imprinted in her the idea that what she's in right now is this tainted, scary thing. As a child, she literally walked through one of these and explored it and came out unscathed. So, Aloy is the most probably well-equipped person that we know of so far to walk through this and explore this and be in this position because of the fact that she's already had like good experiences, so to speak, with walking through these dungeons. It's, it's really important because if some other random Nora was doing this, they actually could have potentially stopped and been freaked out by this because of what they've been told. And Aloy is not, because she was not uh, subjected to those narratives. So she sees this and takes it in stride. It's, it's resiliency in a lot of ways is built up through experience. And so now we walk through here more intrigued than we do losing our shit. Please give me lore. Please give me stuff to scan. Please. I want to scan all the things in here. I can't believe some of these things even still have their integrity. I do want to know how all of these things have been, how the lights have stayed on for 900 years. There we go. Thank you. Protocols use polyphasic entangled waveforms, quantum encryption, black court stuff, way beyond military grade. That's what you demanded. So that's what we delivered. You don't code something you can't crack. All we need is a backdoor. Upload the latest service pack update and the problem goes away. You specifically forbade us from leaving anything resembling a backdoor in code. Every protocol to black court standard. Your words. Look. If you need me to fudge some projections, it's nothing we haven't done before. I don't need fudged projections. I need a way to reassert control over the Hearts Timor Swarm. I don't know what to tell you, Ted. You're asking the impossible. So, codes. They needed codes of some kind to control the machines. But they got out of control. Sounds bad. Go ahead and fudge those projections. Shareholders need to know that their investment is secure. Because they're so important. Shareholders are so... They make the world go round. Yes, this is from the uh, collapse of Reddit, 2023. <laughs> oh, fiction air. I don't think it's too soon, but man, that's <laughs> This is Terragate. <laughs>
Just want to take it all in. What is all this doing in here? That's it. It's a, I realize it's a video game that's so immersion breaking for me that there's a freaking chest in here that's got ridge wood and like metal shards and shit in it. Like what? Unless somebody's already been in here. In case of emergency, let's put some wood in here for somebody to use 972 years from now. A Deathbringer. Or a statue of one, anyway. A machine built to kill. And they honored it? Welcome to Feral Automated Solutions, where all the problems of tomorrow are being solved today. With over 25,000 human employees based in nations and corporate holdings across the globe, Feral leads the world in every sector of self-sustaining, fully automated technology. From revolutionary consumer products close to home, like the Feral Focus, to the dynamic chariot line of peacekeeping robots halting bloodshed in conflict zones across the globe, Pharaoh remains committed to making the future smarter, brighter, safer, and always surprising. Pharaoh Automated Solutions. For every problem of life, a smart solution. So they made the focus. 25,000 people? That's bigger than a tribe. So they made machines and devices. I guess those things were common in their world. Yeah, the specificity of human employees suggests there were probably a hell of a lot more non-human employees. Uh, oh boy. Okay, so, you know, another example of video games trying to tell us to slow down on the technological intervention of things. Reception log. 9.54 a.m. Field commanded to dying of the Indo-Malay Agricultural Combine, say that five times fast, arrived with his delegation. Refreshments to be served before their 10.15 a.m. sales presentation on the chariot line. Per instructions, food will be vegetarian only. 10.07 a.m. Sander Agnew, Vice President of Territorial Integrity from Fresh Grounds Coffee Global, arrived with his entourage. Refreshments to be served before their 10.30 a.m. sales presentation on the chariot line. Per instructions, we'll use fresh grounds Tacoma blend. No artificial creamers. 10.12 a.m. Uh, so that happened. Called security and janitorial to clean up the coffee that was spilled. Actually, more like thrown. I wasn't aware that the Indo-Malay Combine grows coffee beans and that fresh grounds acquisition team has tried to take their fields by force repeatedly. I think Commandment Dying and an had Agnew by the hair for a second there. Who schedules these things? I'm going to drop a line to sales. This can't happen again. Oof. Oof. You gotta, you gotta know your audience. Activate. Oh, this is scary. Welcome to Feral Automated Solutions. Uh -oh. All the problems of tomorrow are... I don't need to hear that shit again. What was this place? What were they doing? Bio, Elizabeth Sobek. Elizabeth Sobek, born March 11th, 2020. Aw, she's three years old. Is an American scientist, roboticist, and engineer, widely regarded as one of the greatest minds of the 21st century. Born and raised outside Carson City, Nevada, yo! During the pandemic, she enrolled at Stanford University at age 13, earning a Bachelor of Science in Experimental Physics and Computer Science at age 16. She completed her PhD in Robotics and Artificial Intelligence Design at Carnegie Mellon University in 2040 and joined Faro Automated Solutions as a junior scientist the same year, rising quickly to chief scientist at the age of 22. Jesus Christ. Over the next eight years, her green robot designs played a vital role in realizing the environmental cleanup and detoxification efforts of the clawback decade, propelling FAS to the forefront of its field. In 2048, she suddenly resigned from FAS, protesting the company's pivot to automated military technologies. In 2049, she founded Miriam Technologies, a firm devoted to life-positive robotics and other technologies. 
Miriam has since become one of the world's largest suppliers of green robots, winning numerous awards and accolades, including the 2053 Nobel Prize for Physics and the 2056 Rachel Carson Award for Environmental Progress. And... Oh man, we got a lot of new people to read about. Theodore Ted Farrow, born December 24th, 2013, is an American entrepreneur and business magnate. He's the founder of Farrow Automated Solutions, FAS, the largest corporation of all time, the world's wealthiest individual, and the first ever trillionaire. Born and raised in Salt Lake City, Utah, he enrolled at the University of California, Los Angeles, where he studied business for two years before dropping out in 2033 to start FAS. After acquiring Twitter for $44 billion, he ran it into the ground and absolutely ruined everything anybody loved about it. Though it struggled at first, the company broke through at the end of the troubled 2030s with its popular lines of personal servitors and bodyguard bots, then exploded when its famous line of green robots led the race to solve the climate crisis during the 2040s clawback. At the end of that decade, FAS opened a military defense branch, dominating the world's market for automated military platforms by 2053. The success of FAS has made Mr. Farrow the world's best-known businessman, one of the most sought-after speakers, and a major voice in politics, culture, and international affairs. Jeez. History. FAS. Faro Automated Solutions is an American multinational corporate entity that produces robots for all walks of life, through it, though its core business consists of military and defense contracts. As of 2063, FAS is ranked number one among the Fortune 5, Fortune 5, no longer the Fortune 500, Fortune 5, by gross revenue and profit for 10 years in a row, a world record. Founded in 2033 by Theodore Ted Faro, an entrepreneur from Salt Lake City, Utah, the company developed several promising robot prototypes in its early years, but failed to break into markets dominated by then-industry giants like General Synthetics and RE Corp. This changed in 2038 with the debut of Alfred line of levitating personal servitors, which generated exceptional sales, lifting the company onto the Fortune 50 for the first time. Profits tripled in the 2040s as the company's environmental efforts, led by famed engineer Elizabeth Sobeck, catapulted FAS to the head of that sector. In 2049, in the wake of successful green and climate cleanup efforts around the globe, worldwide approval ratings of FAS exceeded 90%, and founder Ted Farrow was hailed across media and social networks as the man who saved the world. Yet it was the emergence of FAS as a military contractor in the late 2040s that cemented its status as the world's wealthiest corporation, with a record market capitalization of over $23 trillion. By 2055, FAS controlled 61% of the market share for automated military platforms, holding contracts with 353 nations, transgovernmental organizations, and corporate entities. Today, its buildings exceed the second largest corporation, FB Mobihal Global, by 321%. So that's actually terrifying. Because if you have one company that has all of the military contracts for the world, that company is now what dictates the terms on a socio-political scale that we couldn't ever imagine. Like, literally, all he has to do is send faulty robots to a country that he's got beef with, and they're screwed. Like, it's terrifying that so much of this was consolidated into one person. Definition. Corporation. Noun. An association of individuals created under authority of law, having existence, powers, and liabilities distinct from those of its members. In a business sense, a corporation is usually owned by shareholders, though the sale or distribution of stock, who profit from such ownership, vote at designated times for its governance, and designate executives who run its affairs. Most corporations engage in one or more industries to produce goods or offer services for profit, and may in turn own other corporations, companies, or property as holdings. All the good things. I don't remember if we read this. Oh no, we, we read that back when Aloy was a kid. All right. Uh, I think that's all the data points.
was a corporation. A group of people, not unlike a tribe. And they made machines. Yeah, go on. I've uploaded some data files to your focus. They'll help you understand. Oh, cool. All right, so that's why he sent that. That's cool that he's willing to help her understand, because, yeah, Aloy would have no conceptualization of what a corporation is at all. So it's actually kind of cool that he's willing to give her that. Now, if you're Aloy... So here's the thing, is, like, us playing this game and watching it, we know that that is what a corporation is. But if you're Aloy, he's still a random dude. And he's just giving you information. I mean, there is a part of her that I think would do well to be maybe slightly skeptical of the information that he gives to her just because she doesn't know anything about him or the context of why he's talking to her. Like, it's really important that we don't overly bias ourselves in the direction of, oh, yeah, he's right, because... Like, Aloy has every right to be skeptical of what's happening here. And I would argue should be, because this is all information overload. It's okay to have some healthy dose of skepticism to protect yourself at the outset until you get more information. Now, I know this must seem like a bizarre change in direction. I mean, we're Pharaoh Automated Solutions, right? Number one robotics firm in the world. Why would we clear our production slate to fabricate human-operated vehicles and weapon systems, the relics of the past? All I can say at this juncture is... Trust me, we will be exploiting a massive, uh, growth opportunity by retooling and reallocating capacity according to my plan. So I will need revised projections of mass fabrication velocity across every pipeline within 36 hours. So they were making machines, then they stopped to make other kinds of weapons? Why? Uh-oh, did, did Ted have an oopsie and he's trying to... He's trying to cover it up and redirect everybody's attention? Man like him can control the narrative in a huge way. Hello, he just says, just trust me. Like, they have a choice. Dude runs the company. I'll make Twitter better. Trust me. The air. There's no smell to it. Not even old death. Nothing natural. Could get through. RE complaint from J Friedkin to reception subject complaint. Uh, hey, reception, if that is your real name, want to know who scheduled Indo Malay right next to Fresh Grounds? That would be me, senior VP of sales. Want to know why? After that little hair pulling incident, both sides increased their bids by 40%. I'll explain because your receptionist level brain probably requires it. Those two sides are fighting. And what do we sell? That's right, combat machines. We want them to hate each other. So they will try to fight each other with what? That's right again, combat machines, which they will pay us a lot of money for. So I suggest you go back to serving coffee with a blank smile and let me do my much more complicated job. Thanks a bunch, Mr. Friedkin to you. Yikes. Every conspiracy theory that anybody would have ever had about them seems to, uh, be coming to fruition. <laughs> what a douche. But, okay, but here's the thing. Uh, this happens, man. Like, if you're, if you're listening, you're like, this would never be me. This happens to people, and it doesn't happen overnight. When you progress up the ladder in what you've already been told is a ridiculously important corporation, and then people start to reinforce your symbolic importance over time, such that they start to... What's the word I'm looking for? Such that they essentially start to, like, praise you, and they will stop holding you accountable for things, and you stop getting pushback and all of this stuff you will start to buy into some of the objectification that happens 
that's arbitrarily set up by hierarchies that we create. Like the whole hierarchy of Pharaoh is a construct. And so this guy thinks that he's really important because he's essentially been told that he's important. And because there are arbitrary systems in place that make it so that he's never really held accountable for being an asshole to his subordinates. It very well could be that he legitimately believes that a receptionist is dumber than him just by virtue of what he's been told. In the same way that the Nora believe that outcasts are like bad people. Like we've talked about objectification so much through this playthrough, but that th those words matter a lot. This guy sees receptionist and goes, oh yeah, receptionist, lowly peon. I'm big and important because I've been told that I'm big and important by people who can move a lot of resources to actually influence the world around them. So I believe that I have the right to speak to somebody this way because that's how things are. And there are entire, in real life, there are entire, entire social structures built around this idea and perpetuated by the people who have versus the people who don't. We objectify hierarchy and roles within hierarchy all the time as a way to maintain our sense of importance and self-preservation. We're all capable of being like that guy if we don't watch it. So be careful. You're not important just because people say you are. Or maybe you're important, but it doesn't mean that you're more important than other people just because maybe you do something that has more of a widespread impact than other people do. But yeah, that's uh, there's, I'm sure many people watching this have met somebody who is like that. Okay, holy shit. Well, that was not ideal. This, uh, OSHA hasn't been here in 972 years, Aloy. You gotta be careful. Looks like I can climb here. That is a ladder, so yes, you, yeah, I believe you can. Boy, I'm getting all gussied up with arrows here. That's got me a little nervous. Mate. I'm not going there yet. We got more we got more stuff to learn. We got more stuff to explore. Spiritual Summit. Uh-oh. Is Ted Farrow starting a cult? To Paula Vasara, Spiritual Summit. Paula. Recent events have sharpened my perspective, and I think that I, and FAS in general, have been neglecting the spiritual side of things. Not under any specific religious framework, of course, but in a more general sense, as in not giving enough thought to our shared values, hopes, and aspirations for the afterlife. I'd like you to reach out to re religious leaders of every stripe with the intention of scheduling a conference soon, very soon. I'll have more thoughts about the agenda later, but for now, let's put out some feelers and see if we can lock something in. Make it a big tent. No kooks, but anyone with a credible audience. Let's go deluxe. Make it clear we'll spare no expense. Oh, man. Okay, so here's my theory on this. This is, ver this is just a very, very preliminary theory. I think that Pharaoh knows that shit is going to go south really fast. And so if he can bring in religious leaders and spirituality, he's probably trying to do that in some ways to get people to believe that there is more out there than just these machines so that maybe they can handle the inevitable doom that's coming at them. It's just a hypothesis. I don't know. I don't I have no idea how close that is to correct, but I'm really starting to get vibes from him that... He's trying to get humans back in control. Like, if you want to get machines that humans can pilot, that essentially tells me that perhaps he's lost control of some of the machines. If he wants religion to all of a sudden be introduced here to everybody, right? He wants everybody to get on board with this. There's a real chance here that there's 
they've messed up in a big way and he knows it and he's trying to get humans back on board with the idea that they may have to fight these machines. And he's trying to get ideological frameworks set up for people to kind of deal with what's happening. It's really fascinating. I, I just, I get panicky vibes from him in this. Oh boy. Is it possible to cope grief things that haven't happened yet? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, preemptive grief is a thing, for sure. Sometimes it can actually be more powerful and useful to preemptively grieve things than to wait until it happens. You just gotta be careful that it doesn't suck you out of the present too far. Oh boy. FAS Campus Log. FAS campus security log. High priority alert. Automated log note. All non-essential systems have entered hibernation. High priority alert. Automated log note. Full lockdown has been initiated. High priority alert. Due to the increasing frequency of violent protests targeting the campus, the security of FAS employees can no longer be guaranteed. Therefore, we have taken the difficult decision to shutter this facility indefinitely. Staff will be briefed on a block-by-block -block basis regarding proper procedure for archiving and or disposal of project-related data and materials. High sec and a crisis team will then conduct exit review before all areas are locked down. Oh my god. High priority alert. Priority messaging to all staff in E and F blocks. Treat the current lockdown situation as an exercise, but do not attempt to release the hatches or otherwise exit the buildings. High priority alert. A reminder that while high sec personnel remain committed to employee safety during the current unfortunate events, personal firearms must be relinquished when presenting for identity scan. Oh boy. High priority alert. Additional public access roads en route to the campus have now been closed to, re to relieve waiting time at the outer security cordons. High sec remi reminds all staff that the campus remains off limits to the public. High priority alert. Following recent campus security issues, all staff are reminded that presenting for identity scan and displaying your security badge prominently at all times for image analytics are both mandatory. High priority alert. In light of recent acts of terrorism directed at the rapid transit system, HiSec now offers a Big Brother initiative to accompany staff traveling from offsite. Sign up is required and strongly encouraged. 48 more entries in high priority, additional entries corrupted. Oi. So people were angry at Faro, at the corporation. They blamed this place for something, something bad. I actually, you know, I wish more games would do what Gorilla did with Aloy here, where Aloy processes the information after she reads it. I love the way that they do that. It's great. Like you literally get to see her wheels turn on this stuff. But oi, yikes. Oh boy. Give me a prequel where all this shit's happening. This is like main control room, it seems like. Don't worry, we'll touch the thing. All right, nothing to scan. Oh boy. The FSP-5 Kopesh provides a one-size-fits-all solution to main battle force capability. Metamaterial construction delivers unmatched recoil dampening, allowing you to field any weapon package that conforms to your budget needs and conflict resolution profile. Patented biomass conversion systems allow extended emergency operations with minimal environmental impact. Multilinear target processing provides simultaneous real-time threat analysis and legal review for autonomous domestic operations. Or control can be slaved to the swarm's neural network for weapons-free force application. Either way, when it's time to call out the big guns, it's time to call Kopesh. The Deathbringer. So this was the heavy hitter. Main battle force indeed. Oh my god. So they're in the business of conflict because they sell conflict resolution in the form of like extreme force. 
Amazing though to think about like <laughs> so I'm going to get everybody who's watching this. I want to give you a little bit of background on me really quick before I give what I'm going to say about this, because this is like right up my alley. So prior to when I was in high school and I was getting ready to go to college and I had to figure out what I was going to major in, I did not have any intention of being a therapist. Uh, my intention uh, was to be in advertising. And the reason that I wanted to be in advertising was because I was really fascinated by the way that you could use art and um, like vibes essentially to influence people's buying behaviors and just general behavior. Like I thought it was really fascinating that you could do that. So the psychological aspect of it was always the most fascinating part. I ended up changing majors. I went on to be a therapist. I decided not to be in advertising. But I give you that background because what we just saw and what we're seeing in some of these holograms is the amazing way in which you can disseminate information to the masses in a certain way such that they will buy into things that you wouldn't normally buy into because of the way that it is sold to you and pitched to you. So what's amazing is what we just watched, we listened to and watched this hologram about a death machine that runs on biomass conversion that is specifically designed for conflict resolution in domestic disputes. It is essentially the ultimate death machine available at your doorstep if you have enough of a sum of money. And the way that it's pitched, the sing-songy way that that guy delivers it, is so important to influencing the way that the masses experience that information. It's like a dog. If you say to a dog, I hate you so much. You're the dumbest fucking dog I've ever been around in my entire life. Oh, you're just such an idiot. Your dog's going to love it. Like your dog's going to eat it up because your dog doesn't really understand the language so much as he, he or she or the, they understand the cadence of your voice. And the same way that you could be like, I love you. And the dog's going to freak out. Humans are not too dissimilar. We're just a little bit more sophisticated in the way that we process language, but we're not dissimilar in the way that we process cadence. So you can actually, over time, sell people on certain ideas and concepts that are maybe not even in line with their values because of the way that you contextualize it and the way that you manipulate their representation of it through the way they hear about it and the way that they see it. And we are all susceptible to it in a very profound way. And it's important for all of us to know because you really want to be critical in the way that you consume information. You want to look at the actual information rather than how it is presented to you. Uh, in the same way that if you like watch TV and you watch news, like you're basically being told how to feel about information instead of being given the actual information. We all have to be mindful of this because it's used to influence the masses in very profound ways. And this is a beautiful example of that. Uh, very handsome Billy. Thank you for the raid. I appreciate you bringing people over here. If you have not met me before, I'm Dr. Mick. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I have a PhD in human development. This is Game Sessions with a Therapist, where we play cool games, talk about mental health, psychology, therapy, and more in an effort to destigmatize those things and bring information to people who wouldn't otherwise have it in a responsible and ethical way. I play popular games, and I use them to illustrate and educate about psychological concepts and mental health. And so this is a spoiler-free, backseat-free run of Horizon Zero Dawn, and we're having some pretty cool conversations right now, as you just heard as you came in here, about all the types of things that this game has that we can convert over to talking about real life so if that sounds like something that's really cool to you i encourage you all to stick around and hang out 
I hope you had a wonderful stream, Billy. Thanks so much for bringing people over here. And Spartan, thank you so much for gifting that sub to Billy. All right. So always be mindful of what you consume. Part of the reason I got out of advertising was because it felt kind of slimy to me to sell a corporate agenda uh, via art and cadence. And uh, Defarisa, thank you for the five bits. All right. Let's see what else we got over here. So now keep what I just said in mind as we click on the next two of these portals. And you'll see. The BOR7 Horus. Imagine your complete engagement ecosystem comprehensively managed by a high-speed learning machine network. Whether your need is to replace battlefield losses or intensify force projection, the Horus's onboard manufacturing capabilities mean you'll never get stuck waiting for the next arms delivery. Simply redefine your force parameters, and the Horus will fabricate additional units to fill the ranks for an affordable per-unit licensing fee. Meanwhile, the biomass conversion systems of other chariot line models allow them to keep the Horus fueled, repaired, and ready, extending its operational tolerances beyond that of any competing Titan-class platform. That's the Horus advantage. Always regulating, always ready. The future of automated warfare made real today. The Metal Devil. So these were Faro machines too. Manufacturing capabilities. They can make more of themselves. Then how would you ever stop them? Great question, Aloy. See how that's done? It... You can use reframing for good and you can use reframing for bad. But the language is so important. Are people dying in droves as they fight your wars? Well, with this thing, it can use that biomass to replicate soldiers so that you can keep on fighting. <laughs> The ACA-3 Scarab combines conventional and information warfare capabilities in one package. Designed for high-speed, all-terrain reconnaissance, it boasts the world's highest survivability rating of any Scout-class autonomous agent. Maybe it's the Scarab's emergency biomass conversion systems that ensure it always makes it back to base, even if fuel supply lines have been interdicted. Or maybe it's the Scarab's ability to slave enemy robots to its own network. Now that's force multiplication. Add a prehensile manipulator arm that can handle a host of functions. From 360 degree less lethal riot management to surgical repairs of allied chariot line models. And you've got the workhorse of any cutting edge peacekeeping fleet. The Corruptor. Slave enemy robots to its own network. Sounds like it's talking about how it corrupts machines. <laughs> oh my god, it's terrifying! Dude. I don't have to speak for, you know, three hours about how messed up this all is. I want to talk about the psychology of why on earth would there be so many people producing these machines? Why would there be a human being who would be willing to read these PR clips on behalf of these war machines why and in order for us to understand it you have to understand that people do not get into these types of positions where they justify absolutely abhorrent manufacturing in this case or behavior they don't it doesn't happen in short form it happens in the long term it happens through systematic reinforcement of certain variables of your life and your presence in order to get you into a point where you start to buy into the grander scheme of what's going on without even necessarily realizing how terrible it actually is. At the point in time at which people are producing these machines, they have been probably propagandized into believing that these are necessary. 
because you instill fear in what could be out there. You, you essentially work on people's anxieties. This is a way for us as humans to control the conflict that drives a ton of the frustration and anxiety in our lives. What an amazing opportunity for us to develop machines that can do our bidding in a way that doesn't result in more human casualty and in a way that allows us to live the comfy life that we would like to live free from anxiety and worry. That's the why of why this company exists. And if you can get people to connect to that, the what starts to become less of a thing that you evaluate such that you are creating war machines but are basically being told that you are part of something that is greater than yourself. There is also probably very limited information flow at the level of people who are actually developing these machines. It would not surprise me at all if the people that are writing code for these have an entirely different conceptualization of how they're being used than how they're actually being used, which is probably part of why they made everything so insular when there are riots in the streets about what's going on. You tell the people who are coding the machine, hey, we need something that can take control of another one of our machines and has a level of adaptability because perhaps it's a good way to repair the machine or to get it to come home. And then they create that code and then the higher ups know that it's gonna be used for something else. It's gonna be used to hijack other machines that aren't even necessarily part of that force. Like it's really terrifying stuff, but this is how you get people to buy into it because they only get a sliver of the information. They don't have the broad perspective on it and they've bought into the why of what it is that you're doing because you've sold it incredibly well. So that's how you get humans to buy into abhorrent shit like this because most humans are very well-meaning, aren't trying to cause harm to other humans, are just trying to live their lives. There's a select few that find their ways into positions of leadership that can manipulate the general global agenda by bringing people in and harnessing their naivete and ignorance. And I don't mean ignorance is a bad word there. It's calculated and defined ignorance such that you get people to work toward what it is that you're trying to achieve. And it's terrifying. The military needs plumbing doesn't mean plumbers are evil. That's a fantastic analogy for what I just talked about. This is all humans just trying to survive, man. At the end of the day, just trying to survive and live a life of comfort. And people will go to the far reaches of the galaxy sometimes to try to figure out how to do that. And it's, it's, it's in all of us. As altruistic as we love to believe that we are. It's... Some can regulate it, some choose not to. Like the way up. What's left of it. But these games are built on reality, man. They're not built on some arbitrary random shit. And if you're terrified by what I'm saying, in some ways you should be. This is not an entirely unrealistic scenario here. That'll be a long way up. Frozen metal most of the way. Not making this easy, Dr. Sobek. I wonder if Aloy has a conceptualization of like what being a doctor actually is. Like, I don't get a sense that there's like universities. Can find a way to hang on up here. Guess I can too. Ooh, but are there bonus cool things for me to look at? Hold on. I wish there was a thing that said extra stuff, side questy stuff over here. God damn it! like multiple ways to go up here or what i don't i don't want to i want to explore everything first
Regarding the rumors. This the began when they engaged in unauthorized offensive operations against robots and human personnel of the Hearts Team or Energy Combine. Now I wish that I could relate that the crisis has been exaggerated, but it's not. The peacekeepers have not responded to stand down coats, and by all signs, they appear to be replicating at a precipitous rate. Now what I can promise you, can absolutely assure you, is that I am already devoting every possible resource towards reaching a speedy conclusion to this issue. So when you hear the bad talk about us, against this company, in the days, maybe weeks to come, just bear in mind that we will get past this. That a day's coming, when none of this will matter. Peacekeepers. That's what they called their machines. They were built for war, not peace. Yes, well, Aloy, that's only a matter of perspective. Isn't that fun? Don't you like that? Do you love how it's just... Oh boy, I I do admire his her I admire her skepticism on all of this. Snow haze, white as bone. <laughs> that thought got dark. All right, we're uh, we're dropping down. This is gonna bother me. I'm going to give in to my intrusive thoughts about the uh, the elevator shaft that I didn't climb up. Damn it. The beatings will continue until morale improves. So it really was just what? Okay, really was just the same way to go. Different. Good. Nice. Thanks for giving me a choice there, gorilla. All hands on deck. From Gordon Nakata to Gina Zimmerman. Gina, ever hear of the Melville Island Fruit Association? Neither had I until they filed suit against us this morning. Apparently there's a little island paradise off the coast of Australia, population 2,700, all of whom hate us, now that a stray Hearts Timor unit is chowing down on their largest mango orchard. That brings the official count of Hart Timor related lawsuits to 127, most of them from private companies, but also a bunch of them from individuals, nation states, and NGOs. And that's not even counting the mother of all liability claims from Hearts itself. Call every external firm we've ever used, then call their competitors. We're going to need every corporate defense lawyer we can find who's still half sober and on the bar. Oh man, shit went down fast. So these machines just started eating up everybody's organic materials. And food and trade commodities become scarce. Yay! Woo! Super fun. Aren't we having fun? You having fun, chat? We 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 having a good old time? We enjoying this? Lovely, amazing world we live in here? I know I'm not.
Come on, Aloy. You can do it. You can absolutely do it. There you go. Banda Sea Incident. From Stacy Anders to Robert Rescher. Subject, Dolphin Vid. Bop! Another problem to add to our big steaming pile. Apparently a fisherman in the Banda Sea captured video of a Hearts Timor Horus unit refueling via biomatter conversion along the shoreline of Pulau Wittar. On a pot of endangered dolphins, no less. Quite possibly the last of their kind. Not to get graphic, but it looks like what happens inside a blender, as if the robot was whipping up a big pink swirling milkshake of dolphin chum. Our suppression team has scrubbed it from 43 networks, but it's still propagating, so it's only a matter of time before it goes viral. A prepared statement feels grossly insufficient. Any suggestions? This one's a real stinker. Oh, God. Oh! Not the dolphins. <laughs> yeah, gotta love having the suppression team on board too. PR, baby. There's a reason that corporations have PR, friends. It works. You can absolutely yeah, influence yeah. the masses. All it takes is a few good handholds. The mangoes in Tahiti. All right, made it. Wonder what we'll find. Just send the robots to Tahiti, Arthur. Just have some faith. Have some faith in the mangoes and the and the, and the robots, Arthur. Just have some faith. Oh mm, God. FAS Executive Data Storage. 6% power remaining. Damn, after 972 years in the frigid cold, it still has 6%. That data has been erased from this device. Do you wish to deploy item privileges to recover purged data? Oh yes, I believe I do. Is it really purged then? The has been recovered. Scan the data points. Elizabeth, good to, uh... It's been years. Where's your legal team, Ted? No need. I dropped all 18 lawsuits the moment you landed. I assume your data confirms this. Alright, this promises to be interesting. Perhaps we could have lunch brought in. You know, get reacquainted. I know you, Ted. You've screwed something up to something big or you wouldn't have eaten the crow necessary to get me here. So, spit it out. There's... a glitch in the chariot line. You're a killer robots? Peace. She sounds exactly like Aloy. Keepers, yes, those. So shut them down. <laughs> Obviously, Liz, we would, if we could. They're not responding. Are you telling me a swarm has gone rogue, Ted? It's worse than that. <sighs> Show me the data then. And I'll take that lunch. Alone. Ted Faro brought Elizabeth Sobek here. But they hated each other. Another fire has been recovered. This isn't a glitch. It's a catastrophe. Fully aware. It's bad. Bad? Jesus, Liz. It's not bad, Ted. It's apocalyptic. You built a line of killer robots. Peacekeepers. That consume biomass as fuel. In emergencies. And you made them capable of self-replication. Limit. Okay. So, here's the deal. Listen, listen to him here. He believes everything that he has been trying to sell to people. 
He's literally struggling to detach himself from the reframe that he has perpetuated and clung to in order to justify the presence of these robots. Like there is actual tangible data now that suggests that what he has created is a problem and he still won't let it go. He still says, no, peacekeepers, only in emergencies. His experience is so drastically misaligned with his expectations and couple that with the fact that he is a large part of the accountability for why this is all happening in the first place. And he's gonna struggle to get on board here. Because if Ted Farrow acknowledges what Elizabeth is saying to him right now, that opens him up to a world of vulnerability. It opens him up to, did I make the wrong decision? How culpable am I with this? And those are questions that, while a crisis is going on, are all the more difficult for him to process. But he's not doing this. I really believe this. He's not doing the reframe thing with Elizabeth here because he's a manipulative jackass. This could be any of it. He, he doesn't want to acknowledge that he might be wrong because it's so painful to have to lean into that dissonance. And this is how a lot of problems perpetuate a hell of a lot longer than they should in all of our lives is when people won't acknowledge the reality of a situation and instead try to attend to their expectations and their narratives and their perceptions a priori of it. When I say work with known variables in all of my playthroughs, I'm talking about that to prevent this kind of moment where Ted literally will not bring himself to acknowledge the reality of what it is that he's helped create, even though Elizabeth is trying to spoon feed it to him. It's scary because it leads to people making compensatory decisions instead of making decisions with those variables using the knowledge that they have. And yeah, add in the social reinforcement of the fact that he's been hailed as the man who saved the world and now is going to be the man who destroyed the world. He's going to double back as best he can on being the man who saved the world because that social reinforcement has felt amazing up to this point. He's gotten social reinforcement and resource reinforcement. And now if he's the guy that ruined the world, oh, what a horrible reality to have to lean into. But ultimately, if he wants to solve the problem, he's got to get there. And his unwillingness to go there right now is really tough to watch. This stuff happens all the time. In, in, not, in, not in, you know, giant, I mean, it can happen in giant scale stuff, but it happens even in all of our own lives. We try, we try to preserve our narratives as best we can. We try to preserve our expectations. It's really, really hard not to lean into dissonance. Or it's really, really hard to lean into dissonance. It's hard to lean into times where we might be wrong. Times where maybe we didn't know what we thought we knew. I mean, he's got a, he, this is a, I don't use this word very often. This is a clusterfuck. Like this dude literally has so much shit that he's got to untangle here. But doubling down on all these narratives and stuff right now in PR speak while Elizabeth is standing next to him is not helping him. And it tells me how entrenched in all of this he is. If he was at a board meeting, a shareholders meeting, if he was talking to the president of the United States, I could understand a little bit more why he might do that. But the fact that he has a personal relationship with Elizabeth and he flew her here and he still can't get out of his own way with the narratives, it tells me how deep down in there it is. The context is really what makes a difference here in how we look at this. Self-manufacture controlled. Not anymore. The glitch severed chain of command. The only nation this swarm answers to now is itself. You, you think I did? Everything else is just food. And at the rate it's replicating, Ted, it will strip the Earth bare in 15 months. We're not talking fall of civilization. We're talking extinction. I get it, Liz. So how do I stop it while it's contained? It's not contained. It can't be. You know what I mean. Right. Before the truth kicks out, you mean. Liz, I will do anything you say. Keep working it, and whatever you recommend, I'll do. 
I'm gonna hold you to that, Ted. The Faro robots threatened all life on Earth, but somehow she defeated them. The world of the old ones fell, but life went on, or, or we wouldn't be here. A final cell has been recovered. I wonder, so I wonder if that's what the vaults are. I wonder if essentially people got locked into vaults and were put into cryosleep or whatever kind of stuff. And they're like, we're just going to restart this in 972 years. I mean, I don't know, but I don't think the solution is how do we beat the robots? I think the solution is how do we mitigate the loss so that we could propagate later on? That's my best hypothesis. I don't know how true that is, but that's where my mind immediately goes. Project Zero Dawn. Jesus, Les. There has to be another way. If there are a nicer way to fix your mess, I would have proposed it. But this? This? When I asked you to find a cure, I didn't expect it to be worse than the disease. It's not, Ted. It may be grim, but it's our only chance. Now sign the proposal. Sign it? I can't sign that. Yes, you can. That? Liz, I cannot in good conscience sign that. You've got a choice, Ted. I know. I am speaking to you from a VTOL en route to U.S. Robot Command. In 15 minutes, I meet with General Harris and the rest of the Joint Chiefs. What? what? Are you crazy? Now your choice is what I tell them. Sign, and I'll tell them the wealthiest corporation on Earth has guaranteed the funds necessary to build Zero Dawn. Exactly as I've designed it. Or don't sign, and I will make sure they and everyone else on this planet knows the real cause of the glitch. Ooh! Jesus, Liz. You don't have to threaten me. Obviously she does. I'll sign. <laughs> wow. Look on the bright side, Ted. From here on out, you get to do what you've always been good at. Footing the bill while others get their hands dirty. God forgive me. Oh man. Oh. What made her solution so terrible? What did she do to stop the robots? Executive access detected. Express lift opened. Oh, man. Well, you know, that's what happens when you bring, like, the smartest human in the planet on board is she's going to think about five steps ahead of you and basically call you on your own shit. I mean, I... Is there a part of me that feels bad for Ted? It's a very small part of me. But from, like, a human perspective, yeah. Like, the dude initially... Th this is what happens. The guy initially went in on all this thinking he was really making a difference. He really thinks that he was going to keep the peace, that they were doing good. There are I, I, so many people go in to what are eventually terrible spots with good intentions. But they get corrupted by the system that they're a part of, and they get corrupted in some ways by their own psychology without knowing what all the things that they're susceptible to are. And I think Ted is the product of that. He got swept away in all of the reinforcement mechanisms that took him up to where he was and believed that because he was getting all of this reinforcement that what he was doing was right. And that would that would be any of us. You think, well, if I constantly get rewarded, I must be doing something desirable. So from that perspective, now he sees it all come crashing down. That, I mean, that sucks. You're not what you thought you were because you lost yourself in the process instead of remembering why you got into this in the first place. Where are the times where you could have said no? Maybe it would have hurt profits. Maybe it would have hurt whatever giant scale you were hoping to attend to, but maybe it was the right decision. The right decision is not always the easy one. He had a mess that was on a proportion that I don't think any of us, well, I know for sure, 
anybody watching this video has never had to manage because none of us have had to manage doing damage control on 15 months left until the earth expires. No, but there's no possible way that Ted was prepared for that. It doesn't mean he's not accountable for the decisions he made along the way. Like, I want to be very clear that just because I'm empathizing with Ted's experience doesn't mean I agree. Uh, if he gets locked away and thrown in prison for a long ass time or is left on the, on the surface of the earth outside of the speck of zero dawn, uh, you know, by all means. But it, th this is the kind, this is so realistic in how this is portrayed is really what I'm getting at here. Like, this isn't some off-the-wall thing that's happening in a sci-fi fantasy sphere. Like, this this absolutely is the way that something like this could go down. Because of a person and people, not just Ted, who get swept away by the continual reinforcement they get, that they're doing good, and then they can control the narrative, and they control the resources, and you just start to think your shit doesn't stink. Because nobody's telling you that it does. Damn, man. And then Elizabeth comes along and hits with the hefty dose of reality and is the person who probably should have been in charge in the first place. She's the one. I, I, actually, arguably, Elizabeth is the one that made the hard decision I'm talking about. We read about it. She literally hit a point where she diverted off and said, nope, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing the military thing. I'm going to go create machines that are green that help us i'm sticking to that because that's why i got into this she didn't get sucked into the allure of the fame and the fortune and all of that stuff that's a hard decision to make man it's a really really hard decision to make and she made it and that's why she should be the person in position of leadership because she's willing to make hard decisions that are in the spirit of everybody not just her own self-interest Wow. Well, I was not expecting that this is how this was going to go tonight. So. That really did look like the Titanic bow, didn't it? We gotta climb all the way to the top. We can't go down yet. Power cell. I keep finding these power cells. What do they do? I'm guessing they power that cool ass suit of armor that we found back in that bunker, Aloy. Woo! been my mother she lived ages ago all this searching and i'm still no closer that's your reaction to everything you've just learned to whine like a spoiled child <sighs> you should really try talking that way to me face to face as you wish oh do you really have no idea how monumental are the discoveries you just made aloy i expected more of you so you have a face. Got a name to go with it? Of all the questions you could ask right now, that's the one you choose. Okay, he doesn't have to be this condescending. The, okay. You know who you know who he is right now? You know who he is right now? He's everybody who's already played this game, who knows where all of this goes. Watching a streamer, could be me, could be somebody else being a complete dick because that streamer doesn't know what's happened yet and is learning things along the way. 
That's literally who he is. So if you think he's being an asshole to, asshole to Aloy, that's who you are if you're spoiling stuff for people on playthroughs, okay? <laughs> literally who he's being right now. Now, I want to talk about this because this is obviously this is something that affects a lot of us and the way that he is presenting himself right now is not uncommon in fact i think it creates a lot of problems knowledge is incredibly important and is incredibly powerful and it's awesome to have it because it means that you have more known variables to make decisions off of than the people around you do Aloy just got blasted with shitloads of information that she has had no time to process. This guy has had probably a huge amount of time to process it, or he just learned it and he's blocking his insecurity about not knowing anything about it by acting like he knows something about it. It's one of those two things. Just because you have more information than somebody else doesn't mean you're better than them and doesn't mean that you should be condescending toward them. Help them learn. Help them synthesize it. If he sees that Aloy is struggling to understand all this stuff, say, all right, hey, let's sit down and talk about it. He said to her before she even climbed the tower, I want you to succeed. So he shows up here and he's just condescending from the outset. All the stuff you just learned. And you want to ask my name? Yeah, because you keep talking to me and you're a dude who's supposedly going to help me understand this stuff. Yeah, I'd like to know a little bit more about you because you know a lot about me, apparently. Like, that's not an unreasonable question. So, chill. If you have more information than somebody else and use that information to help them if they ask for it, which is essentially what Aloy is doing here by asking all the questions about what's going on and trying to synthesize this information. Like, it's just not a good way to cultivate a trustworthy relationship between the two of them, which it seems like they're going to need to have if they're going to progress through whatever this narrative is going to take us together. He's the spoiler in the YouTube and TikTok comments right now. For the person who goes, I know where this game goes and you don't. <laughs> Doesn't make you better. Just means you played it first. I've spent decades searching the ruins of the old ones, trying to solve the mystery of what happened to them. For years, I've suspected that feral robots destroyed their civilization, but I could never confirm it. And in minutes, you uncover more ancient knowledge than I have in a lifetime, and what you want to know is my name. Yes. Uh, oh man, I was I feel okay. So, <laughs> what he is essentially saying to Aloy is, "What you don't know my entire life history prior to us meeting? How dare you!" No, she doesn't. You're going to have to tell her. And this is how you tell her. Like, literally, I have all of this. I've dedicated my life to all of this. And now he's like, I'm mad at you because you got more information than I did in my entire life. That's not Aloy's problem. It's not Aloy's fault. Aloy didn't know that about you. And even if she did, it doesn't change anything because Aloy is not working on the same directive that you are. Aloy didn't come into these ruins because she wanted to learn more about why the earth ended. Like he's, this is projection. He's making an assumption that she was wanting to do what he was wanting to do instead of taking the time to actually learn something about her. The entire reason that Aloy was here is because she wants to know if this lady's her mother. That's all he cares about. Uh, that's all she cares about. I want to know if Elizabeth Sobeck is my mom and what that means for me because I grew up motherless in a tribe that didn't have to worry about the world ending. He's like, I've wanted to know all of this forever. So it's a total misfire in terms of like understanding the relative context that bring them together here. And again, all it does is disconnect them. Aloy has zero investment in this guy's directive in the same way that he has zero investment in her directive to figure out who her mom is. 
Neither one of them cares about the other's context right now, and that's absolutely disconnective. So if they're going to want to get together and figure this stuff out, they're going to need to be curious about each other's experience. They're going to need to connect a little bit with why that person is there. So if Aloy wants to say to him, hey, that's cool, man, but that's not why I was here, so glad I could help. Instead of him saying, hey, thanks for helping me get all that information, he's all pissy because he didn't get it himself. And now he's acting like a dick to Aloy in a lot of ways because of that, it, rather than using what's actually in front of him. And it's really a shame because he could have an amazing opportunity to connect with her here and doesn't take advantage of it. And yeah, Aloy has every right to be annoyed about this because she didn't actually find out whether Elizabeth Sobeck is her mother. She didn't get any answers to why she was here in the first place, despite the fact that he did. So of course she's going to be like this. The only thing that she would care about with him is what his name is because, hey, you're in my ear and you're talking to me constantly and you seem to care about the shit that I care about in a different way, so who am I working with here? You unlocked all this and you want to know my name? Saying how you start. It's not how you start. Silence. That's my name. Now, why don't you try asking another question? Something less trivial. Ugh. Silence. If you want to give her some kind of information that you think would be important for her to have, just say it. Don't ask her to ask the right question. I, I'm experiencing, as you can probably tell, some real transference with this dude. I can't stand people who present themselves this way. It is absolutely antithetical to, like, everything I care about. Like, you're not better than her just because you are smarter or have more information. And asking all these leading questions and, and demeaning her and coming off as condescending because you're jealous that she got something that you've been wanting for a long time but she wasn't even intentional. Like, he's just, he's over-personalized this. He's projecting. He's condescending. Like, he's not doing anything that's akin to relationship building here. He's annoying. Like, it's, it's so hard to connect to a person who presents this way. It's so hard. So, in the interest of what we do in this channel, I'm going to make an effort to do it. I'm going to try to cut through my annoyance with him and try to understand where he's coming from with the limited knowledge that we have. He's been trying to figure out what happened in the old ones. He's made it pretty clear that he's dedicated his entire life to this. And when you dedicate your entire life to something, it holds a high degree of importance. And you do everything you can to try to consume as much information as you can to uncover all the things that you want to uncover about it so you can build whatever skill set you're trying to build. My guess is that he's probably given a lot of sacrifice to that. There's probably been things that he said no to. There's probably been parties he didn't go to because he wanted to go to an excavation site. Like, there's any number of things I'm sure that he has done in the name of gathering all this information. And for as old as he appears to be, not having all of that information and still finding dead ends would be incredibly frustrating. Like, imagine that. Imagine if you spent your entire life trying to search for something and you could just never find it. So then Aloy shows up, and she does not share the, any interest in what it is that you're trying to find, and she gathers all of this information that you've dedicated your entire life to trying to gather. Yeah, you probably are a bit annoyed by that. You probably feel like you wasted some time. You probably wish that you would have found Aloy sooner. Maybe you start to rethink the ways that you were gathering information. Of course that would be frustrating at its initial outset. So I can understand why he is maybe physiologically aroused and probably feels really insecure about the fact that he didn't have all this information. So what does he do? He compensates for it by 
trying to assert that he knows more than her because it's important to him that he knows things. And the fact that she knows more than him in five minutes is really frustrating. So in order to compensate for that and to not put that insecurity out there, boom, he jumps out in front of it and comes off as a conde with condescension as a way to essentially signal to her, I know more than you. You're not all important because you just found all this information. The thing that you were looking for is not as important as the thing that I'm looking for. And then he disconnects from her as a result. When the reality is he could lean into it and be like, all right, I didn't know all this, but this was really useful information and could come to her and say, you know, I've been searching my entire life for this information. And I am so grateful that you were here because you just helped me get a lot of answers that I've been searching for for 40 years. How connective would that be? But in order for him to do that, he has to lean into his insecurity about that. He has to lean into the narrative that he needed her help. And if he's been doing this solo for a long ass time, it's a really hard thing to lean into. So if we take the empathic view on that, if you're Aloy, maybe you say, hey, something must have happened here why, about why this guy's really pissy with me. It's probably not personal. Like if you're Aloy, you can try to depersonalize this. I think it's a bit unfair to put the burden of this on Aloy because of the fact that he's really the one being condescending and being an ass to her. She's not being an ass to him. So it's hard for me to put the onus on Aloy there. But if you want the empathic view on silence, that's the way that I think we have to approach it here. So if Aloy gets empathy, he gets empathy. There's a word for that. It's called multi-directed partiality. And it's a way to try to sort of counterbalance even things out so that we can get into a space where we can problem solve. So there you go. What I just did was fight through my initial annoyance with him to try to find empathy so I can gauge them differently. It kind of helped to talk my way through that. Yeah, he's also, yeah, he's uninvited. He just kind of showed up. Um, so now, do I, so now as Aloy, you have to make a decision here. Do you go, for, the, I see your point, we're not going to, we're not going to touch. It's either if you're so smart, so we either decide, do we assert dominance with him and say, oh, if you're so smart, why don't you just tell me what the hell you want to say? Or do we say you don't understand and try to go the empathic route and soften? This guy clearly has information that we want and need. And I think the thing that would really behoove Aloy here, as hard as it may be to do, as tempting as it is to say, well, if you're so smart, just fucking tell me what you want to say. I'm going to say, hey, man, I don't really appreciate the way you're talking to me. And it doesn't really seem like you understand why I'm here. You have no idea what I've been through, how hard it's been. My whole life, I grew up not knowing who I am or where I came from, and then come the Eclipse trying to kill me just because I look like this Elizabeth Sobek woman. And they killed the man who raised you and you found the mountain as a baby. I already know this through your focus. The point is, every time I take a step forward, the answers slip farther from my grasp. <sighs> you just don't understand. It's not that I don't understand, Aloy. It's that I don't care. <laughs> I admire that. I actually admire that. I realize that that comes off really shitty, but I, that's the first thing that he said where I'm like, all right, sweet. Hey, now I know what I'm working with. Now I know what I'm working with. He doesn't give a shit about me. Sweet deal, man. Thank you for being honest. I'm so glad. Because that's the thing. Aloy's not entitled to him giving a shit about where she comes from. She's not. In the same way that he's not entitled to Aloy giving a shit where he comes from. That's the thing that he's going to have to get uh, screwed on here because Aloy could essentially say, well, I don't give a shit about you either. But I respect his willingness to be honest there. Because if he's truly apathetic to her and her story, there is no point in bullshitting it. There is no point in engaging with her that way. He is far better off saying, look, here's what we're working with. I don't give a shit about your story. I That is the most transparent thing that he has said to this point. I respect it. Because look what, ha like, look what happened there. He, he, th this whole interaction is amazing to me. It's really amazing to me. It, there's so much richness here. And of course it would happen now. Um, he got vulnerable for a second there. Like when he said to her, you know, you sp I spent all this time in my life trying to do this 
and you found it in five seconds, that's a very vulnerable thing for him to say for all the reasons I already described. So Aloy meets that with some vulnerability. Like when she says, you don't understand, I've been working my ass off here. Every time I take two steps forward, I lose more information. I don't feel like I'm getting what I need here. Like that's vulnerable for her to say. Now that could have been a moment where he's like, wow, you know, it really seems like either of us don't understand each other. We should make an effort to do that. No, because that would be connective. Instead of that, he goes, well, I just don't care. So he pushes her back, pushes her away. Now, whether that's because of the vulnerability and he doesn't want to connect with her or for other reasons, I don't know what it is, but it's really amazing. Like he, That's a very easy way to just push her back and say, well, I don't care about you at all. Don't care about your story. So we're going to get back to the pragmatics of this and we're going to work with what I want to know. And Aloy can say, well, all right, well, unless you want to build a relationship with me, I don't really give a shit about you either. But... Aloy has a lot of power here, and that's why it's a little bit surprising to me why he is choosing to operate this way, because Aloy obviously has access to information that he desperately wants. And he probably knows she's in control, so he's trying to assert dominance here. One of the best ways to assert dominance is apathy. Um, saying you don't care and actually not caring about somebody and being less invested in them gives you power in a relationship. It's a sad reality of relationships, but it's true. If the answers keep slipping away every step you take, then you best start running to catch up. <laughs> Maybe then you realize just how big your problems really are. What exactly are you talking about? You've chased a personal riddle into a crowd of larger mysteries. A common thread is your connection to Elizabeth Subic. But what is that connection? She couldn't have been my mother if she lived centuries ago. We don't know the connection yet. The only way to find out is to keep going, to keep making discoveries. Thanks to you, we've only just now learned that Pharaoh robots once threatened to end life on Earth. But it didn't happen. The Old One's civilization was destroyed, but life... life was saved. Obviously. So... What did Elizabeth do? How did she stop the robots before all was lost? What was Project Zero Dawn? Exactly the question. Now, are you ready to go get the answer? Of course I am. I got some side questing Why to do, Silence. Not so fast, Silence. You've got some explaining to do. I've told you quite enough. If you still got questions, be quick about it and stop wasting my time. Bro, dude. <sighs> Chat, please, if you ever, if you ever want somebody to work with you and they have some degree of power in their ability to help you, do not treat them the way that Silence is treating Aloy. Do not be dismissive. Do not be apathetic. Be open and curious and informative and empathic. That is what is going to reel a person in to being willing to assist you with whatever it is that you need assistance with. You don't get to have intellectual and conceptual buy-in just because you think something is important. You just don't. You have to warm your way up to it. You have to build a relationship. If, if somebody's that important to what it is that you need, you gotta build a relationship with them. You have to understand their motivations. You have to take time to be empathic and give information where you can. The way that silence is acting is not, is not a way that is going to bring most people in unless they are completely aligned in terms of their personal agenda. You said you've known for some time that Faro War Machines destroyed the civilization of the Old Ones. The evidence pointed that way. But until now, I never knew the full scope of their danger. That they could process organic matter into fuel, or that the Horus class could manufacture more robots. Like a cauldron on legs. But the robots we've seen so far, the Corruptors and Deathbringers, they don't do those things. Not yet, anyway. So far, we haven't encountered any that are undamaged. At full power, who knows what they're capable of? Now, that's enough talking. Be on your way. <laughs> oh, no. 
I'm just getting started. You've been getting a free ride on my focus, risking nothing while I risk everything. All I have to do is take this thing off my head, and you'll be blind, deaf, and dumb. So quit complaining and answer my questions. Very well. Ha! <laughs> Eat shit, silence. <laughs> That's awesome. That right there. Go, go get it. You got to do it. She's got He has shown time and time again that like he ain't going to he ain't going to go the empathic route. He ain't going to go the softened route. She tried it once, it didn't work. Yeah. Give it to him. Absolutely. I've got shit. I've got power here too, buddy. You don't get to just dangle my mom out in front of me. That's beautiful. Beautiful. She's playing his game now. She knows his audience. She knows her audience. That's really good shit there. Really good shit. So far as I can tell, the Eclipse are just following orders. It's Hades who wants me dead. Who is he? I don't know. The Eclipse describe him as a buried shadow, some kind of devil. That thing that spoke to me outside, that made that focus explode. That was Hades. It, it didn't seem like a person or a machine. More like a phantom with a terrible voice. All that's certain is that he wants you dead. Because of my connection to Elizabeth, has to be. Hades is using the Eclipse to resurrect feral robots. But if Elizabeth found a way to stop them centuries ago, if she made special weapons, maybe Hades is worried I'll do the same thing. In some of the ancient data I've recovered, there are hints of so-called super weapons being developed. Maybe to stop the robots, the civilization of the old ones had to destroy itself. That was my theory, Silence. What's up, Commander Ivy? Who are you, Silence? And what are your intentions? You really need to make this personal? Yeah. You did. I'm a lone wanderer who left his tribe behind a long time ago. An explorer of forbidden places, a searcher of lost knowledge. Exactly as I said. Why do you know so much about the Eclipse? I happen to know a lot about a lot of things. If what you're really asking is whether I work for the Eclipse or anyone else, I don't. I am nothing if not independent. You've been using my focus to spy on me. How is that possible? Every focus emits a signal, a voice that only other focuses can hear. I know how to string those voices together, how to make them talk to each other, to communicate, even over vast distances. How do you learn to do that? Years of study and experimentation. In principle, it's not so different from how you override machines. I override focuses. And you can spy through other Eclipse's focuses, too. Usually. All I'll say is that overriding the connections is... complicated. Is there any chance that Elizabeth Sobek could still be alive somehow? It's highly unlikely, but not impossible. Some of the ancient data I've recovered includes mentions of life extension techniques. Pharmaceuticals, mostly. An ancient word for medicine. But some were still trying to perfect ways of freezing and unfreezing people. Freezing and unfreezing people? Cryogenics, they called it. But there were problems with it. Given Elizabeth's technological acumen, I can't definitively rule out that she found a way to make herself immortal. But this is speculation. Wasting time. Elizabeth told Ted Faro she was headed for a place called U.S. Robot Command to tell people about Zero Dawn. The place still exists as a ruin. The Asaram call it the Grave Horde. Grave Horde? Cheery name. You'll find it in the Eastern Mountains, buried under the tangled coils of a metal devil, or a BOR-7 Horus, rather, as we're learning to call them. I'll contact you when you get there. I can't wait. Someday we'll meet in person, and your manners had better be improved. <laughs>
he did soften a little well, bit as things were going. Will be a lot faster than getting up here, at least. U.S. Robot Command next to learn the secrets of Zero Dawn. Woo! Wow. Well, how about we hop down the elevator shaft at the start of sixteen, huh? See, I gave you that whole spiel at the beginning of this video about how I was going to side quest. And then silence drew us in. Ooh, baby. That was a good one. A real good one. We got a lot to chew on there. Really got a lot to chew on there. Uh, YouTube, thank you so much for making the effort to come out here and watch these videos. If you made it all the way to the end here, please, please, please give a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, follow the links down in the description, all that fun stuff. If you financially support the stream, thank you for doing that. If you are binging, see you in the next one. If you're waiting for the next episode to come out, we'll get it out as soon as we can. This is a good one, huh? See you in the next one.